Welcome to Metro Vancouver Close-Up, I'm Dachmar Timmer, with a quick look at how local governments and community leaders are building sustainability through shared goals. Green spaces across Metro Vancouver are benefiting from the efforts of a dynamic young woman, Lita Salatian. Her volunteer-powered organization is doing the heavy lifting to help keep urban ecosystems thriving and diverse. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing four different invasive plants. Volunteers from the Lower Mainland Green Team are showing up to the beach on this rainy Sunday to improve the ecology of this park. The Lower Mainland Green Team is a group of volunteers from all over the Lower Mainland, from Langley all the way to West Vancouver and everything in between. We're at the Spanish Banks and we're removing the invasive species of Scotch Broom. We want to make sure that we give native plants and trees a chance. You'll notice that it's actually pretty much only Scotch Broom in there because it's outcompeted on any native plants and trees. Many of the volunteers are recruited and organized online. I use social media to get the volunteers outside. And so I'll post our events on the Meetup site and then I'll spread the word about it. And then people can go on the site and click RSVP and get all the information there. And it's been very effective in engaging people. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Woo! Some water, I need some water. Invasive species, from my understanding, is the second biggest threat to habitat. And so removing that and making sure that the, the native plants and trees have a chance. It's important for nature to have lots of variety of plants. It's also important for people to do it, the people that live here, the communities. This is an opportunity to reconnect it and realize that we are actually all interconnected. And we are dependent on our ecosystem to sustain us basically and take care of us. So we have to take care of it to, for it to take care of us. Art can unite citizens, local businesses, and public amenities. And those kinds of connections support sustainable communities and the local economy. In Richmond, the city's Lulu series highlights the relationship between art and the urban environment. The monthly Lulu Speaker series in Richmond focuses on art's role in connecting citizens to their community. The Lulu series was designed as a series of lectures by um, people from all walks of the art world, all art and design and administrators, to bring focus on the importance of art in our lives. So art in the public realm, but not just public art. The event starts with a performance. I ride the bus, I mold my body to its thrust and lend its frame my gravity's trust until I see the stop signs. Then there's a guest speaker whose presentation is about the role of art in infrastructure. Kath Berner, this is going to be the second time she's been here to talk about big infrastructure projects and the integration of art into them. So she does things like wastewater, sewage treatment plants, detention ponds, and some transportation structures in King County. He found this landfill and they picked out glass. And then he recycled that glass into the giant sculpture at Bow Lake Transfer Station. Again, as a way of looking, talking about how we identify unusual sources for recycling. I think it certainly helped to raise the awareness of what public art can do. It's changed thinking on how art can be integrated into a community. You know, I think for both our city staff and city staff from other communities, it certainly, I think, raised the bar in terms of their thinking and, and how art and artists can be integrated into projects. Small-scale energy utilities are operating in the cities of North Vancouver and Richmond, where they're drawing free energy from the ground and lowering greenhouse gas emissions. The city of Surrey just launched its district energy system in city centre. Surrey's new city hall features heating and cooling that comes from the ground. So there's about 400 underground wells that extract heat from the ground and then they inject heat to the ground uh, when we're in heating and cooling modes. So it acts like a big battery that, that holds heat throughout the year. Under these manhole covers in the underground parkade, the heat is drawn up or down and then is transferred to a second pipe system that loops through City Hall and the library. We'll be delivering thermal energy to buildings on the underground pipe network, so it's basically delivering hot water to buildings to use for space heating and domestic hot water, in some cases uh, space cooling. It's the first example in Surrey's district energy strategy, where small-scale energy sources serve nearby neighbourhoods. 
This one is sourced from the ground, but future district energy systems may use clean wood waste or biofuel. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a key benefit. These types of lower temperature systems are becoming more and more common for municipalities to help reduce emissions and improve energy resilience. It's important to set clear goals on how to protect the environment and ecosystems, especially with a population of 2.3 million people in Metro Vancouver. In Burnaby, the city is charting its course to environmental sustainability by listening to its citizens. Today at SFU's Burnaby campus, the public is being asked to weigh in on the sustainable future of the region. Burnaby's Environmental Sustainability Strategy, or ESS, is a plan for Burnaby's green future. The city's already developed a social sustainability strategy as well as an economic strategy, so this is sort of the third leg of the stool, if you will, uh, to try to complete and integrate those two other strategies um, for a broad sustainability policy. Burnaby is engaging people with posters focusing on different environmental themes, and they're encouraged to offer comments and ideas. They're covering kind of ecosystems, water systems, livability. We're looking to our community to give us new ideas. We need people who are coming in with a different perspective. We need young people and old people. We need people from different backgrounds coming forward to be able to tell us what they think our city should look like in the future. Today's event at SFU is just one of several that happened across Burnaby. We're really challenging ourselves on how we're going to move into the next decade environmentally what we can do to be one of the greenest cities on the planet, how we can look at ways we're going to improve our ecology, to integrate our new development and our density into a city that has one quarter reserved for park and green space. To be honest, it's an issue of us being pressed by our citizens to ensure that we're doing the very best job we can to make sure that our future generations have a place that is very livable. See more examples of local sustainability at metrovancouvervideos.org. For Metro Vancouver Close-Up, I'm Duff Martimmer. See you soon.